Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to make this. Um, it's a visualization of a bathroom, so it's purely conceptual. It's not. It's not here for, you know, documenting construction. It's just a vision of a design. Now, all design should start with a sketch. All right. I cannot stress this enough. You've got to get a pencil and paper and sketch what you want. You don't start on the computer. And you know what? It doesn't have to be a great sketch. It just needs to be something that guides you along the way. So here was my original sketch for this visualization. You can see it's nothing special, but it was a guiding force for me to complete this visualization in, with with the right angle and, you know, everything I wanted in place. If I didn't have this to keep referring back to, I would get lost. Things would start to get out of whack. So this is the guiding light for any design project. Start with a sketch. All right, let's get right into it. So get rid of my sketch there. Now, that was the result of it. I'm going to show you how to do that. This is what it looked like in Blender. OK, that's my model. It's actually a really simple model to make. Um, there are a few little tricks I did. But as you can see, the whole building is not there. It's just that. I've, I've done the whole thing just for this one view. And that's what really visualization is all about. It's about getting that one hero image. It's not about, you know, joint documenting joinery, you know, doing engineering detail. It really is getting that hero shot. So I'm going to show you from the beginning how to go about doing this one. All right, here we are with a new Blender file, and I'm going to show you how to create a visualization of a bathroom much like this one. So I told you I had the sketch um, done so what I'm gonna do is just I've got my sketch reference here I'm just gonna keep looking at that and um, try and recreate that visualization. Here we are with a default cube and one of the first things I do is like to change the dimensions from these generic units going over here into the scene and then changing the units here to metric that gives me meters to work with. So I don't want my cube, I'm going to get rid of it, hitting delete, and I'm going to add in my uh, floor first. So hitting 7, uh, let me just turn my screencast keys on, there we go. So now you can see in the bottom left when I click something, you can see um, it's coming up there. So I'm in uh, top view now, and I'm going to hit 5 to get into orthographic view, and that's it straight up orthographic view from the top. Now I'm going to add in, click on the center here and add in a plane and that's just added in a simple ground plane for me. Right now it's up a bit high, I want it to be right on this plane here, this axis here. So what I'm going to do is change this Z dimension to zero and that will snap about down here change this y to 0 and this x to 0 and that puts it right back in the center. Great. Now let's adjust the dimensions. I think something like three and a half meters should be good by three and a half meters. And working in meters is just very natural for me. I can kind of gauge the correct height for benches because you know I have a bit of experience in design so um, I don't want to work in generic units. It will just confuse me. So if I can work in, you know, millimeters and meters, it's just going to be a lot easier for me to get the right proportions in my design. All right. So hitting five to get into a nice perspective view, we can see we've got our ground. Now, hitting zero takes me into this camera view, and what I want to do is basically model everything so that it creates this beautiful hero shot. But first I need to kind of set up my camera. So now I've got the right dimension floor, I can start maneuvering my camera around so it'll look good. <laughs> Alright, one of the things I'm going to do is adjust the camera by adjusting these values here. You can see that. So that it mirrors this kind of taller shot. I don't want a widescreen shot. I think this concept works quite nicely with everything a kind of narrow view. So I'm going to adjust my camera to get that kind of narrow view. OK, 
Okay, so and then I might just round off my values to make them a bit make them make a bit more sense. Yeah, okay. Two eight hundred. So this is in my imi final image size. Okay. That's looking quite good. But what I want to do now is zoom in so that the camera will frame the shot nicely. Um, what I'm going to do is hit 7 and 5 to get into my top view and just select my camera and maybe bring it in closer to my uh, ground plane and then hit 0 to get back into the camera view and hit G and Z. G is to drag it, Z is to constrain it to the Z axis. There we go, bring it down and maybe G and then X, constrain it there. Okay, that's that's roughly where I want it. Now, let's add in the back walls of our bathroom. So I've selected my ground plane and I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode and then select and shift select these three vertexes excluding this one and now I'm going to hit E E will extrude so you can see it's constrained to my mouse now but I'm going to hit tab Z and that will make it constrained to that vertical and let's get it high enough so that it will completely take up my shot alright so I'm not worried about that this is not realistic because what I'm worried about is this camera view so now it's just about kind of grabbing my camera so hitting tab to get back out into object mode and just kind of grabbing my camera and just ever so slightly adjusting it um, so that I can get my shot which looks like there it is okay. so that my shot looks like this so I get that kind of um, depth and the right angle there so it's not quite right I'm just going to spend a little bit of time of adjusting it and I'll put you on pause and I'll come back okay what I need is this bench in there and that will give me a reference to set up my shot to get the proportions right I think just using this empty room it doesn't give me enough reference to, to frame everything properly so I need one um, defining thing in this space to help me set everything up. Alright let's add the bench so getting out of camera view let's go into top view and let's hit shift A and add in a cube. Now I know that cube doesn't look anything like the bench but what we're going to do is just modify the dimensions to get it to the right size. So you can see here, um, if you're ever confused about which axis is which, down here, X, Y, Z, you can see in the bottom left hand corner. Now let me turn my screencast keys back on. There we go. Now I'm going to set the depth, so the X dimension, and that's going to be. 400 mil, 40 centimeters or 0.4 of a meter and let's set our thickness so this this dimension here and that's going to be um, 0.06 oops <laughs> there we go so that's going to be 60 mil thick or 6 centimeters and let's just adjust this one just so it covers the entire space whoa that's just way too much <laughs> seven meters probably need something like 3.5 meters there we go and um, I think we might make it a bit longer so that we make sure we get yeah we make sure we, it covers the entire shot so there's not a gap. Um, I'm thinking something like 5 meters, there we go. And just shift that along using the modifier, there we go. Now 
it's in the wrong position, we need to move it back to the wall here. I'm going to hit Z so they get a wireframe view and just bring it back and just bring it back. Now you'll notice, hit Z again, that it's sticking out there, it's sticking out here, sticking out there. Not worried about that because all I'm worried about is that shot there. Alright? I'm not worried about anything else outside that camera view because I'm planning everything for that hero shot. If I had planned other hero shots where I've got to rotate the camera around, yeah, then I need to worry about other parts of it. But in this visualization, it's just that one shot. So let's worry about that. All right, you'll notice that compared to my mm, original image, can't seem to get them side by side. There we go. <laughs> it's it's not looking right, is it? So that's what this piece here, the most defining piece in the space is going to help me do. It's going to help me set everything up so that it's looking nice and in proportion. Um, you'd be working off a sketch, but I, I have the finished product, so I'm just going to work off that. Um, uh, bef what, to make that original one, I used a sketch. Um, so what I need to do is to get this height here correct. Right now, you'll see up here, um, this piece is 1.53 meters above the ground plane. So if I hit 1 to go into side view and hit Z to get a wireframe, from this red x-axis to where it is is 1.5 meters along the Z axis. So I'm going to change that to what it should be. Whoops. <laughs> Let's change that to about um, 0.8, so 800 mil from the floor, and get back into camera view. There we go. That's that's defining the space much better, and it's it's much closer to how it should be. Now you can see that my camera is not quite rotated right. So what I need to do is to grab my camera. So I'm going to hit Z to get into top view. Grab my camera and hit zero to go back into camera view. And with my with my picture um, just sitting over here, you can't see I have two monitors, so I'm going to be looking at my picture here and then modeling it here on this monitor. I'm going to get my camera and hit G to drag it down, Z to constrain to the Z axis. G again and maybe Y, no, X to constrain to the X axis, G constrain to the Z axis, and I'm going to hit R and that will rotate but not in that direction, I want to hit R and rotate in the, mm, yes, so hit R and then double tap X, so let me show you that again, hit R, that's not rotating right, so X and X again and I constrained it to that way. And I think that's fairly close. And then G and Z. Down I go. Okay, I'm going to do one last thing. You'll see this line where the two walls join is not quite straight. So I need to rotate my camera to get that straight. There we go. That's looking fairly good. Now, the one thing you'll notice is this thickness here is a little bit different. Um, so I just need to go and adjust that. Okay, I just checked my dimensions on my drawing. I should have done that before, and I've realized this is wrong. So I need to adjust this. Uh, this dimension here needs to be something more along the lines of 850 mil. That's better. And this dimension needs to be, no, that's fine. And that one's fine. So let's just get into top view. And now, yes, we'll need to move this back over. And that's more like it. So let's get back into camera view, top view, bring my camera back a bit. There we go, 
maybe G and hit X. And I'm thinking this is getting fairly close to where we need to be. Hmm. Let me just check that again. And you can see how long and how much effort I'm putting in to get this sh right framing because unless you set it up right, it won't, your visualization won't go as you planned. You really need to spend time on the little details like this early on. Everything will flow on smoother if you get it right now. If you make a mistake now, it just compounds itself and things just get out of whack. So that's why I'm spending a lot of time getting this frame and this shot right. Alright, another thing I discovered was that this dimension was actually wrong. So I need to adjust this. Um, you can see right now it's 6cm, but in my plan it was 12 So 120mm. There we go. Now that gives it that real thick look that we saw in the original image. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with that and the positioning and the shot and the framing and everything. So I think, yeah, I think we're good here. Um, you can see I took a long time with that, so sorry to drag you through all that, but I just wanted to stress the importance of, you know, getting it right from the beginning. All right, we've left the bathroom scene and we've started up a new file. I just want to demonstrate to you a principle in modeling in Blender. I want to add in these two basins. So I need to construct this nice oval rounded shape. There's many ways to do things, but what you have to think about in Blender is to reduce the amount of vertices and polygons. So, and this goes for all modeling really. If we go Shift A and add in which kind of seems the intuitive way to do it is sphere. Look at the sphere's surface. Look at that. Look how many, if we tab into edit mode and then control tab into face mode, look how many faces it takes to construct this cube. All right? The more polygons and the more points you have, the slower your rendering will be and the more just complex your model becomes. Whereas you look at the cube, let's tab back out, tab into edit mode, it's only eight points, right? You see that? So the cube takes a lot less memory, a lot less processing power to generate. So we're going to use this cube to create that round shape and I'll show you how first thing you need to do is add modifier and we're going to be using this a lot in Blender so get used to it. Let's add in a subdivision surface modifier. Look what happens there. You see that? Oh, let's turn my screencast keys back on. Okay. Instantly adding that modifier has turned this into a rounded shape. If we tab into edit mode we can see it's still got the original cube geometry. I can't grab these points in here, right? It's a mesh that's defined by this cube. So how does that help us? Well, this piece, this geometry is only being generated by those eight points, whereas this one is being generated by many, many more. So what I'm going to do is show you how we can make this into also a rounded shape by increasing the number of subdivisions. See that? It gets smoother and smoother the more subdivisions we have. But the more subdivisions we have, the more complicated the geometry. So let's try and keep it down to a minimum. Let's try two for now. And then let's shade that as smooth. Okay, so with those two adjustments, you can see we've almost got a better result than that sphere. And we're using way less points to do it, just the, the original cubes points. And also gives us quite a bit of control and interesting ways to edit it. Alright, I'm going to go into edit mode now 
And what I'm going to do is add in a division. Control R adds in this loop cut. So I'm going to choose there, add that in. You see that? This is what makes Blender so great. But I'm just going to right click and leave it right in the middle. And then grab these top vertices, all four of those top ones, and delete them. And delete vertices. Okay, so now we're left with this kind of half sphere. Let's grab these outer points here and just stretch it out till we get roughly the shape that we want. Okay, that's looking nice. And I'm going to grab these bottom points in here and shift 7 to look at the underside of this. Is it 7? Shift, oops. Shift 7 to look at the underside of this. And I'm going to hit S and scale those in. Just and then maybe grab these top ones, just drag them down a little, flatten it out. Great, it's looking good. If we quickly render this, we back out into object mode and just put these next to each other and just quickly quick render. We'll see it's a little bit jagged. Now you can see the ISO cube is quite jagged. But what I'm going to do to alleviate that jaggedness is yeah, so we've got our shading back into object mode. We've got our shading on smooth. See if it was flat, it would look like that, right? But we want to smooth it out nicely and then just add in one more lot of subdivisions. Okay, that smoothed it right out. You can see the difference there. Got a really nice smooth shape now. But when we go into edit mode, we still see it's still defined by those four points, and that gives us a really nice way to edit, as opposed to this one, where if we want to move something, oh, we've got to grab a whole lot of points just to get um, some editing capability there. So you can see that using this way of constructing things, we can create really nice smooth geometry from a very minimal amount of points. And that's going to serve us well in the long run. Back to our bathroom. Now I showed you how we go about creating those basins, so let's go ahead and do that again. Let's add in a cube and let's add on that onto that cube the subdivision surface modifier and let's increase the subdivisions maybe just keep it at two we can always increase it later keep it at two and then see how that goes now we need to go tab into edit mode and control r to add in a loop cut and right click so I'm just using Z to get toggle between my wireframe and my solid view. And then let's grab our top vertices, delete them, and grab those ones, stretch it out a little. It's all right and then grab the top ones shift that down if you ever want to get rid of all the other stuff and just look at the one that you're working on the slash key on the numpad will just isolate that this is called local view so I'm in local view now everything else is gone and I'm just going to scale that in let's get my screencast keys back there we go Okay, so that's looking nice. Remember to shade smooth, get that nice and smooth. Numpad slash to get back into full view, and I'm just gonna, from my top view, just initially scale it down to roughly the size I want and position I want. So you can see though, they are gonna be roughly that size. Yep. 
pretty good. Now, looking at through the camera, it looks pretty smooth. Let's just do a quick render of that. There's some slight jaggedness there, and this is with the subdivision set at 2. I'm just going to think about leaving it there for now. Again, we can always increase it later before we do our final render. But while I'm modeling, I don't want to have anything bogging down my um, system, like with all those extra points. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. And if it looks jagged, I'm going to increase the, um, the subdivisions later. All right. Let's take a look and try and get it in to the right place. That's looking good. Here we go. Now, it has zero thickness at the moment, so it's just paper thin. Let's increase the thickness. And we do this by adding another modifier just above subdivision surface we've got solidify and you can see that's already added some thickness but it's only one centimeter let's make that a hundred millimeters uh, it doesn't let me use caps okay 100 millimeters lowercase there we go and you can see that added some nice thickness there looking through seems to be a little bit thick so we might just lower this down to Eight centimeters thick. It's looking a bit better. Mm. Still might be a little bit thick. Let's try five. That's good. Five centimeters thick. I'm just going to save my file because Blender's been crashing a little bit. It's just Control S, save your file. Just do that religiously. Okay. Yeah. That could be good. Now. We need two of these basins, remember? But let's just check our size. So we can see our size is this. 80 centimeters by one meter by 31 centimeters. Now that's, one meter is just way too big for a basin. We want that down. which means we want to have this one down mm, no let me think about that, hang on I might just do it by scaling it, so if I press scale it's going to scale it like that and let's just bring it down to size 70 centimeter basin. Yep, that's that's good. And let's get back in our view. Yep, okay. So you've got that reference image to guide me. Um, it would be a sketch in your case. Just now we're going to duplicate this shift D and constrain it to the Y axis. So I just tap the Y so that it's constrained to that axis. And that's pretty good. Now I can see that my reference image got a bit of more gap here so I might need to just adjust my camera to allow it to go off into that direction a little bit. So I've adjusted my camera and I've just extended the frame just a little bit more and you can see now there's a kind of gap where the floor is so what I need to do is simply extend my wall out a little bit so I'm going to select my um, room and then grab these three points and just drag them out just so that the camera has completely got something in its frame great so that's looking pretty good Um, and if we compare to our image, we're getting pretty close. Alright, so we've got our basins in, we've got our bench in, everything's looking in the right proportion. Now we can start really getting into some of the detail. Right?
let's go ahead and add in this mirror. Now I'm going to go into top view and shift A, add in a plane. And what I'm going to do is rotate this plane 90 degrees around the X axis. Okay, that's looking good. What we need to do in Blender, whenever we do a modification like this, we're going to often need to hit Control A with our object selected, Control A, and apply the rotation and scale. That way that zero is back down and now everything's relative to how it is now. If we had left it, it might muck up things later on. So we're always going to have to apply any rotation scale that we need to. I'm going to just manually move this back into place. Okay. Now, from my corrector view here, I'm going to scale S and X, no wait, S and Y. Scale it on the Y axis there. You can see the Y axis, the green axis there. And that looks good. And S to scale again, and now along the Z axis, bring it down a bit. Okay, now shift it down into place. I'm always looking at the reference image I have, which you would be looking at your sketch if you have sketch and that's looking pretty good now this needs to be extruded so I'm just going to tab to go into edit mode and E to extrude and extruding it back far enough okay so we have a mirror now, but this mirror has a frame and then a mirror in the center. So what I need to do is to just create that frame. Okay, so tab into edit mode, select these outer vertexes, and this will be, I believe it's shift I or control I. It wasn't control I, shift I. It wasn't shift I either, I think just I. Okay, <laughs> just I. And that what that does is that's going to inset the faces. So I just need to insert this here. And it gives us control over on the left hand side down here. I can change that thickness which I might change it to about 15 centimeters I think so 150 millimeters because I like to work in millimeters there we go and just grab these ones uh, yeah I should have applied the rotation and scale see that affected the inset so what I'm going to do is just undo that and again and control A no, in, in object mode, so tab out of edit mode. In object mode, control A, apply rotation and scale. Okay, now let's try that again. So back into edit mode, I've got my vertices selected. Yep, so inset and now 15 centimeters. And let's Try that again. Inset uh, about that far and just adjust this to the right distance. Okay, now you see that inset, in, inset nice and perfectly because before it was all scaled and adjusted, but then we had to zero those scale factors down by applying the rotation and scale, and now it does it nicely. Great. Then we take this four vertices. And we're just going to, from top view, extrude, E to extrude, and extrude it back ever so slightly, giving us that nice little edge in there, creating that frame. Okay, that's looking pretty good. One last thing, I'm going to do a little trick here, and I'm going to separate 
that backboard. So with my back four vertices selected, I'm going to hit P and it will separate by selection. And now that is in a separate object. If I can just show you. See that? This is been separated out. Okay, because that's because I'm going to want to apply a material to that particular object. One thing I haven't been doing is naming my objects, which you can do up in this panel up here, and it's a really good practice. So let's start by naming everything so that again everything's organized, everything's neat, and if someone else has to work on your file, they don't have to go searching around for things. Everything's there and named correctly. So I'm just going to go through and name all the objects. Um, one by one into what they should be. So the scene is bathroom. I don't need to name the camera. So this cube, you see as I select it up there, it selects down there. This is the bench or counter. Actually, it might be counter is a better word for that. And this is basin underscore one. And basin underscore two. Got our counter. Let's call this walls. Or well, actually, this is more technically room. This mirror, uh, mirror frame. Underscore frame. And this is the actual mirror. Okay, now I've got everything named correctly. If I never ever need to find something based on one, there we go, bam, selected. Great. All right, let's go ahead and model these taps in here. Now, I'm gonna do it in a similar way as um, we did the basin. So I'm gonna start not with um, something you would think like uh, I could start with a circle yeah see I might start with a plane like you would think I'd start with a circle because these taps are circular but I'm gonna do the same thing as before I'm gonna start with a very simple geometry and add modifiers to it and this will lower my render time lower the amount of polygons in my scene so let's again rotate this 90 degrees Um, we want that view, yep. So bring it across. I'm going to scale this right down to roughly the size we want it. And then we're going to apply, again, it's the subdivision surface modifier. Hello. There we go. So you can, whoops. <laughs> Just excuse me for a second. You can see what happened what has happened here again it's it's created this almost round shape and if we just increase that by one then we get a really nice just about round shape here now the next part of this is to extrude that so let's go into edit mode and extrude that along Okay, we just need to extrude it along a little bit, but you can see what it's done. It's kind of created this like pill shape that we don't want. We want um, to have a nice cylindrical feel. So I'm going to add in Control R, add in a loop cut. Then I'm going to move my mouse wheel forward. Just move my middle mouse wheel forward, and that increases or decreases the amount of loop cuts. I want two. Okay. Now I'm going to grab this back one okay and gonna just slide that right to there and grab this front one and again slide that right to there now look what that's given me it's given me this really nice just about cylinder and again if I tab out of edit mode and shade smooth look at that with a very small amount of geometry created a pretty good sphere 
And when we're in our camera view, you're not going to really notice those jagged edges so much. If we do notice it, we can always just, um, if I zoom in here, you'll, you'll see that. Maybe go numpad slash go into local view. And yeah, if I ever want to get it smoother, I can always, you know, just increase the number of sub subsurface divisions. But right now, let's try and keep it as simple as possible. And again, when we render it, we can always just increase that. All right. So I'm going to stay in local view because it might be a bit easier to work in. And tab to go into edit mode. And let's control tab to go into face mode. Grab that face and I to inset. Inset the surfaces. And let's just drag that in. Um, something along those lines and then grab that face and let's extrude it out okay and I'm going to add in a loop cut okay now I'm going to need to grab all of these to pull this along now if we wanted that let's add another loop cut there just so we can control that that kind of radius there yep okay now I want to select all of these all four so I'm gonna press B and that gives me a box select and I can drag it over but actually I need to unselect that because I had these ones selected so try again box select drag that okay I've got them both now I can just extend that out however far I want and I'll need to go back into this view to find out how far and tab back into object mode, put it against the wall and um, center that we're doing no, nope, nope three, okay and let's get that in line Um, so there's many ways we can put the bend in. Um, what I might try and do is go into edit mode, add another loop cut where I want to start the bend. Then uh, numpad slash just B for box select. Select those, and I might let's see if I can get into the right view and rotate it around uh, no I didn't have all of them selected or did I yeah I didn't have those back vertices selected so this can be a problem when you're selecting um, it just selects the ones that you can see so you need to hit uh, one of these now oh, here we go this one here and that will select everything even the ones you can't see so let's try that again and rotate ninety degrees and let's try and shift that down like that now we can grab this one back into vertex mode, grab these four and perhaps adjust that a little bit that way and I'm not sure, maybe shift those two, no not. we might need another loop cut in here just to kind of smooth that bend out and I think if we rotate these four It'll look a bit better. Yep, it's not not too bad. Okay, let's have a look what that looks like from our camera. Okay, not too bad. Just think it needs to go down a little. There we go. Yep, that's pretty good. Okay. So again, the great thing about Blender is I have 
a lot of control over this. I can increase the amount of subdivisions to make it, you know, as quick to render or as smooth as I'd like. And also, if I go back into edit mode, all these. Um, oh, another tip for you: if you can hold down Alt when you select a vertice, it'll select everything in that chain, and that gives me a really nice kind of control. So, um, hitting A to deselect all, and then yeah, I can really, you know, nicely control these after the fact which in a lot of other modeling programs you can't do. Once you put in that geometry, it's kind of set. So it's a really nice thing, you know, if I want to adjust this kind of radius here, you can just easily, you know, have a more rounded look, just really nice and quick. And that's great. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess we get to the taps now. Let's model some taps. Um, I'm going to start using this spout here. Shift D to duplicate, duplicate along the Y axis, and move that into place. Let's get the correct view here. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's so tap to go into edit mode, and a numpad slash to get the local view. Just to make it a lot easier to work with. Okay, A basically deselects or selects everything. B gives me a box that I can use to grab a lot of vertices. Now I'm making sure that this is checked so that I can select everything, even the ones I don't see. Yep, they're all selected. Delete, delete the vertices, and we're left with this. This is the base I'm going to use to construct my tap. I'm going to select all these vertices here and get into a uh, front view and scale them down because the tap stem is a little bit thinner than the spout. Right, now just grab these front ones and pull that up. Um, that looks about right. Now, how are we going to make these little tap parts? Well, let's use a couple of tricks. First trick is going to be adding a modifier called mirror. So we're going to mirror things, which means that when I do something, it'll do it mirror across a plane. And I want to mirror along the x and y axis, not mirror along the z axis, because that'll do that, right? We want to mirror everything down these two axes. All right, let's add in a loop cut, Control R, just to give us some more control over that radius. Another one, Control R and bring it up to about where we want the taps to begin. Okay, that looks good. Now, I'm going to tab to go into face mode and select these two faces. And then I'm going to hit W and subdivide. Now that subdivides those two faces and you can see everything's being mirrored here. But don't worry, um, it'll all work out. <laughs> Trust me. Now, I, the last thing I did was subdivide, so I'm going to change the number of cuts to two, and that'll give me more uh, vertices to work with. Then I'm going to select that face and extrude. There we go. Here's the beginning of our tap. Yep, and you can see what I'm doing here is being mirrored on that side. I'm going to control R to add in a loop cut about there and then I'm going to scale that loop cut up to give it a more tap like feeling. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to repeat this process with this one here. So E to extrude. I'm going to make sure we get it. I'm just doing this by eye because remember this is purely for visualization. We're not actually building these taps and I think that you know this could be a little bit high Let's bring it down a little okay I'm thinking that's looks pretty good now we've got a big hole in the in the face here so what I'm gonna do is 
get back into my vertices select mode and just select all these outer vertices okay and hit F and that will fill in that face then I'm gonna hit I to insert the faces left click and then just kinda insert them in just watch stuff like that that's gonna cause problems in our modeling so let's just insert it down to about there so that nothing's overlapping okay that looks pretty good let's hit mm, one more thing this looks a bit funny here I know we probably won't see it but I just want to make sure that you know this tap looks quite realistic okay what I can do is select this loop cut here and just shift that up there and add in another one in here and shift that back down there and then I want to alt click select that and scale that in a bit and maybe add in another one here and scale that up a bit okay that's just I just wanted that kind of little dip in there that's better now numpad slash out of local view and tab to get out of edit mode and yeah let's have a look at the camera yeah, I think that's appropriate. Okay, now it's just a matter of duplicating this. So let's get in the correct view. Shift D to duplicate along the Y axis. And about there's good. Now grab them all. And what we're going to do is going to group these, Control G, and give them a group name tap set okay and then we're going to shift D that entire group and move that along the y-axis and get that nicely in the center there okay and Z okay that's looking pretty good let's do a quick render of this just to see how it looks and we're not going to use the internal blender engine we're going to use cycles render so let's switch this over to cycles and click this little camera icon and then render. Yep, and you can see maybe our basins, we need to up the subdivisions on our basins because they're slightly jagged. But that's, you know, this is a pretty high resolution picture and that's rendering nice and fast. I like that. Okay, looking all right. To get out of our render view, all right, we could save that image um, by going image, save a copy. And to, to get back to change our views, we go here and back to 3D view. Okay, great. Okay, got two more things to do in this scene, which is to add the PowerPoint and the light. Um, I'm going to make a couple of minor adjustments and just show you how I'm going to do those. What I want to do is zoom in here a bit and all these taps are perfectly um, 12 o'clock so I really want to just adjust them a little bit make them appear a bit more natural. So I'll select this one hit R to rotate and I don't want to rotate it like that I want to rotate it constrained to the x-axis and I'm just going to go around and rotate two of these taps just to give it a bit more natural feeling. I'll rotate this one just a little as well. Okay, so they're not all perfectly on 12 o'clock. Alright, next thing I want to do is slightly adjust the camera. So select the camera and I just want to capture a bit more of height in my scene. So I'm also going to rotate my camera but constrain it to I believe the x-axis. So I double tapped X, just going to shift that up like that. And I may also extend my uh, roof, well, not my roof, but these wall heights. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and just grab these three vertices and shift them up a bit. There we go. And maybe just grab my camera again tab into object mode and is G to grab 
z to constrain to z axis and just bring that up ever so slightly get a bit more of a higher feeling to this image keep the main parts in the kind of bottom third and leave the top half for a nice reflection in the mirror that's looking good um, I think I want to make sure this wall is straight so I'm just going to rotate my camera until that line straight is up there yeah it's going to be difficult isn't it I think that's about as straight as I'm going to get okay good now let's add in PowerPoint um, I think we'll go from this view and we'll add in a simple plane. We'll need to rotate our plane 90 degrees this way, also 90 degrees this way, and let's scale it down, right, right down to PowerPoint size, and scale it along the x-axis. It's getting the right kind of shape. I think that might be a little big, so I'm just going to scale it down a bit more. It's looking alright. Now let's position it. Probably want to get into this view, get it against this back wall. Nice. It's looking good. And don't forget, Control A, reply the rotation and scale, because look right now, you'll see. Um, the scale factors are all, you know, all different because it's still referencing that original uh, plane we put in, and we also got rotation applied to it. So if we just control A, apply rotation scale, zero 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 one 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 one. This will stop any problems occurring later. Okay. Now let's go into side view here. And just see how far that's sitting off the wall there. Back a bit more. And now let's extrude it. I'm sorry, tap into edit mode, extrude it back so it sits into that wall nicely. Um, let's select our front face and W numpad slash first to get into local view so there's nothing in our way. Now I'm going to W subdivide that surface and give it quite a few cuts mm, yeah okay that should be good now what I'm going to do is just grab these vertices and rotate them and maybe grab those two bring them in. and you can see what I'm trying to do I'm trying to create the kind of slot where you would insert the plug. Okay, and now let's try with another one. Just using some scaling. And rotate that one. And I'm just going to try and space out these vertices so we don't have any problems later on. That should be okay. Now I'm going to grab that one and that one, but I don't want to grab... Let's try faces, so go into face mode. Just grab that face and that face. And... Ah, oh, we're missing out one, aren't we? <laughs> so I'm in Australia and Australian PowerPoints have these kind of three plugs three pronged plugs so I'm going to just try and recreate that just get this third prong in here Okay, now tab into face mode, 
grab that one, that one, and that one. And what I'm going to do is just extrude it back. There we go. Just to create that kind of look. Yep, that, that should be good. That should give it enough shadow to make it look like a kind of PowerPoint slot. Um, now we need a switch. I might just um, grab all of these actually. Let's shift them over. No, 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 that's not what I wanted. Actually, no, I'll leave it right there. That's fine. That, that's actually looking good. I, what I need to do is probably extend it out this way. So grab the edge here and just drag it out a bit. Okay, that's better. Now, if I grab those four vertices and subdivide that, and that'll give me a bit more geometry to work with. Now I'm going to make this into a switch. Let me shift that down a bit. And let me shift that up a bit. Shift that across a bit. Okay, that that could be roughly a switch. Yeah. Now what I'll do is extrude that out. Yeah, but so slightly. So E to extrude coming out as a switch and then I'll just grab these two vertices here and drag them back down and that should look alright okay looks a bit of a mess there right but when we get back into regular view that should be fine